So this is our second lecture on fetal circulation. And in the first lecture, we described basic uh, development, um, uh, the development of the human being in the womb or in utero, and uh, how the placenta and the umbilical cord are an integrated part of this developing human body, and that uh, the placenta really functions as the digestive system, the urinary system, and the respiratory system as all of the entrances and exits for the body. The organs in the fetus, in the uh, child, are still growing and developing, um, and there are no access to the outside world. And so, so our, our problem with circulation was described in much this way. Um, the rich, rich oxygenated blood, which also contains rich nutrients and it's been cleaned, is all returning um, from the placenta through a large umbilical vein. And how will that blood then be routed to um, the most important parts, especially of the body? Um, it's got to be routed from the placenta it's because it's returning in the venous system, it's got to run through the systemic veins. Um, we want to route it away from uh, most body tissues, at least at first, and then try to get at least that best blood to the head end of the child. So, we're going to just deal in this lecture with the first of the rerouting of the blood. Um, there are three um, reroutings that the blood goes through to get from the umbilical vein up to the brain in uh, as rich a state as we can get it. And so we're going to deal with the first one here. The next two lectures will each deal with the other two. And then we'll finally wrap up by saying what happens at birth. And so let's talk about this. The problem we have here is that this rich umbilical blood, the umbilical vein that is carrying it, runs up the inside of the abdominal wall and runs right to the liver. Um, the liver would be the right place to go if you were coming from the digestive system. And in a sense, this is. This is bringing nutrients from the placenta as well as oxygen. But the problem is if we run this blood through the capillaries of the liver, the liver is going to, the cells of the liver then are going to take the nutrients, take the oxygen, and leave very little resource for the rest of the developing body. So there's a problem as the umbilical vein comes here to the liver, and we have to solve that problem. So this is our first rerouting of the blood, the first um, cardiovascular structure that's going to help with that. So if we follow the blood as it flows up through and toward the liver. It's coming up the um, abdominal pelvic cavity, up the anterior part of that. Uh, as you can see in the picture, the vein curves over and comes down into the liver um, from above. Let's take this little box here and let's expand it so that we can see it a little bit better. And you can see here that that umbilical vein, just like this, is going to send the blood right down into the structure of the liver and to the cells of the liver. The hepatic portal vein, which we described in our other special circuits lecture about the, uh, the hepatic portal system, that vein meets this as well. Now that's bringing deoxygenated blood. Um, but not blood rich in nutrients because the digestive system itself is not using 
are not uh, absorbing nutrients. Um, those are all coming from the placenta. But both tubes meet here and would flow the blood then into the liver. So the problem, as we stated before, is that this rich blood must not pass through the capillaries of the liver, or at least not all of it. Okay, so we're going to avoid the liver with a bypass or a detour, and this is the very first one. So let's look at it. And there it is. This is called the ductus venosus. Okay, the umbilical blood, as you see, is going to pass through this ductus venosus and avoid all of that, the capillaries. Not, not all of it will avoid that um, because some of this rich blood will enter the liver. It's not like the tube is completely taking all the blood. So the liver is going to get this rich, rich blood and it's going to grow very fast. And if you remember, it's really the chemical um, refinery for the bloodstream. This does act on all um, elements of the blood and, and constantly massages and changes and uh, chemically treats the blood so it's compatible with the human body. So, um, the blood is going to be able to flow th now through this ductus venosus, although the liver is getting some. The majority of this is going to flow through the ductus venosus and over into what we call the inferior vena cava. Now, you've uh, studied the inferior vena cava. We know that it's connected to the heart, um, that it comes from the lower part of the body. And here's a much better view of it. And through this, you can see the blood pouring from the umbilical vein into the inferior vena cava, mixing with the blood that's coming there right now. And this then is sort of a second problem here. Um, that rich, rich umbilical blood is going to mix with the poor blood, the deoxygenated blood of the inferior vena cava. And... It can't be avoided. At some point, since we're traveling through the systemic veins of the human body, which carry normally deoxygenated blood, um, this rich, rich blood has to mix with it. We're not going to be able to preserve the richness of that umbilical blood as we go through the, the venous system. So knowing that, we're just hoping that we can minimize um, it's dilution. Um, and what's important here is part of what we mentioned in the first lecture that, and you'll remember this and you probably recognize this, that the head end of an unborn child is much larger than its lower body. And so the amount of deoxygenated blood here coming back is smaller by proportion than it would be if it was coming from the head end of the body. So we do have dilution. What is good here is that we don't, we're not losing any oxygen as we would if we went through capillaries. Um, so let's, let's kind of summarize this. The ductus venosus allows blood to go from the umbilical vein over into the inferior vena cava. <clears throat> From that point, the uh, blood is on its way to the, the inferior vena cava leads to what organ? It's on its way to the heart. <clears throat> so at least we've, we've had some dilution, but we've, we're taking a short trip. We're hoping that the heart then can help us pump this blood where it needs to go. So, um, oxygenated blood mixes with deoxygenated blood here in the inferior vena cava. But the key here is that we have not passed this blood through capillaries. So no deliveries have been made. Nothing has been removed from the blood. And that's what you have to continually remind yourself. It's only in capillaries 
that deliveries are made, that anything is exchanged or removed or added to the blood. So <clears throat> what we've done is simply diluted rich, rich blood with deoxygenated blood from the inferior vena cava. And thankfully, this is somewhat of a minor dilution because the lower part of the child's body is fairly poor. And so we still have pretty rich blood. I like this diagram here that shows sort of the redness of the umbilical blood, and it becomes somewhat more pinkish in color. It's lost some of its redness due to the fact that it's diluted. But it's still got much more richness to it than the deoxygenated blood does. So this is what's happening in our first rerouting. Blood from the umbilical vein is getting into the inferior vena cava through the ductus venosus and is on its way to the heart.